Now then, you lot, my name's Nathan. You already know I'm hungry. It's a Sunday. That means it's Sunday dinner. We're gonna make a roast chicken dinner today. It's gonna be delicious. We will be making some non-chicken dishes as well. Just, you know, Cree only eats chicken and veggies, so we're gonna try and work around the beef, the pork, and the fish schedule. I'm gonna work it out. First of all, let's go butchers. Right, we're on the iPhone because I cannot be bothered tracking around a whole camera so whilst I'm trying to shop. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying safe. It's a beautiful day in London today. Just before this video carries on, I'd really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, just subscribe because I'm trying to reach 10K because YouTube is a milestone. It takes a long time. I'm trying to put out weekly videos. So I appreciate you subscribe. If you want to like it, you can like it. Um, it's going to be a big video today because obviously I want to show you all the steps, everything I'm doing, why I'm doing it because obviously these videos are much more detailed and in-depth for you compared to my TikToks. So, big love, thank you. Let's go butchers. Yes, brother, uh, I need a whole chicken, please. One chicken? Yes, please. Can I get a large, please? None. Thank you. I'm very hungry today. Thank you very much, have a lovely day. Chicken acquired. That large chicken cost £8.40, which is actually not much difference from a supermarket chicken. And I know that this chicken is fresh. It's come from the butchers. He's trimmed it up for me, which I could do myself, but you know, he offered to do it already. And uh, yeah, so you know, you can get a supermarket chicken, no problem, you know, if that's more convenient for you. But I just like having the opportunity of being able to go to the butchers. I understand some people can't do that though. So yeah, get whatever size chicken you need, whether you want some leftovers or whether you're just trying to eat it all that day for yourself or your partner or your family, whatever. Right, this one's gonna be a very long video. Basically, I've got a very small kitchen. I have one shelf in my oven and four hobs. We're gonna make this work. Just goes to prove you can do it in your own space, in your own time. Trust me, don't worry if you take a whole day to make this. Right, a list for today what we're making. We're making a roast chicken, we're making gravy, we're making Yorkshire puddings, we're making roast potatoes, honey roast carrots, savoy cabbage, and what was the last thing? Cauliflower cheese. We are not making stuffing today because Cree doesn't like stuffing. It doesn't make sense to use it. Guys, you wanna use what you like, make what you like, don't make something just because the internet told you. Cook what you want to eat. That's it, it's that simple. This is just what I like to eat with my roast chicken dinner. You can eat whatever the fuck you want. However, my priority right now is Greg's. Please sponsor me. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is make our Yorkshire pudding batter so it can rest in the fridge as long as possible. For this, you need 135 grams of plain flour, 200 millimeters of whole milk, two eggs and salt. That's it. Now, let this rest in the fridge for at least one hour. If you can do it the night before, even better. I'm gonna rest this for probably around an hour to two hours whilst I'm doing all my other prep and get the chicken cooking. Right, like I've said in my previous videos, you need to get your mise en place done. Now, Sunday dinners can be quite daunting for a lot of people because there's a lot of things going on, a lot of different timings, and a lot of different cooking methods, mainly roasting, but still. So, prep all your vegetables now. We've got a time when we're not cooking anything and we can get ahead of ourselves. Peel your potatoes, get them prepped. Cut your onions ready for your chicken. Peel your carrots and get them chopped. Slice up your cabbage, get your cauliflower all portioned up. Get your herbs all chopped up, get any garlic chopped up. I'm already starting to soften my butter, ready to cook the chicken in. This way you're gonna feel like you're getting ahead of yourself and it's not too daunting. If you have things prepped, it's ready to cook, you work in stages, you're gonna be more organized. Now with your potatoes, you wanna get them straight into water after you've cut them. And that way you can just stick this pan straight on the hob, ready to parboil. Try to keep your potatoes all a good average size. That way they're gonna cook evenly and they're gonna roast evenly. The more sides you have, the more surface area it is for crispiness. More crispiness, more delicious, obviously. Let's make our life easy. We can just get these carrots ready now. We can just add butter, a little bit of oil, salt, and honey. Almost forgot pepper as well. And these are ready to go. We can just throw these in the oven one hour before we're ready to serve.
Now we're gonna get ahead of ourselves and roast this cauliflower off early for the cauliflower cheese. It's gonna get cold after you roast it, but don't worry, because we're gonna pour hot bechamel sauce over it and finish it back off in the oven with cheese on top. And that's just our compound butter that we're gonna put over the chicken now. Right, we're gonna to wanna to remove the wishbone. That's gonna make carving it a lot easier. All right, so that's the wishbone. Normally it comes out like a V. Um, I snap mine in half just in the process. Don't worry about it. If you do, just make sure to remove this. So now you're gonna to wanna to work your fingers under that skin and that's where we're gonna place the butter. This isn't going to be a pretty job, but we're going to take our butter and we're just going to lather this bird in it. Underneath the skin, over the skin, inside the carcass, all over. So, this bird weighs just over 2.7 kilograms, which means it's going to cook for just over two hours. On the BBC Good Food website, there was a really good meat calculator, which basically you can just input how heavy your meat is and it will tell you how long and what temperature you need to cook it at. All right, this has been in for 20 minutes and I think I'm gonna leave it in for another 10 minutes uncovered. I'm gonna just baste this now, put it in so it's all nice and golden brown, and then we're gonna wrap it in foil and put it at the bottom of the oven for the next two hours. Right, let's move on to them Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings are delicious, we all love them. If you don't like Yorkshire puddings, I feel sorry for you. Now, I only have a very small little like jam tart tin, whatever you wanna call this. Your best option is to get a muffin tin. Big, deep, perfect for a portion Yorkshire pudding. So I'm gonna get very small Yorkshire puddings from this, but it's okay, because I'm gonna have a lot, because I'm greedy, because I can, because I'm an adult great thing about being an adult is no one can tell you what you can and can't eat and if I want to eat Yorkshire puddings and a lot of them I will so hot oil is the trick to a Yorkshire pudding we're gonna fill these halfway with hot oil very hot and then we'll pour the batter in and get them straight back in the oven that's it all right let's move on to the roast potatoes now roast potatoes Let's get them right. We want nice, crispy roast potatoes with a fluffy inside. For this, you're gonna to need to parboil them and then we're gonna cook them in very hot oil and butter. That's it, let's go. Not bad for a terrible oven and a very small tin. I'm happy with them. And carrots in. And that is when you know your potatoes are done, when you can stab them and they slide off the fork. Right, now we have the potatoes in, the carrots in, the chicken's cooking, the Yorkshire puddings are cooked. We're gonna move on to the bechamel sauce now for the cauliflower cheese. All you're gonna need for this is flour, butter, milk, cheese, and bay leaf. All right, and that is the cauliflower cheese ready to go. 10 minutes before we serve it, I'm gonna throw this in the oven to get it nice and golden brown on top. I know this chicken is juicy. It looks like it's all falling apart, but that's okay. We're gonna turn this lovely liquid into a gravy. Before we do that, we're just gonna let the chicken rest, cover it back up in the foil again. All right, in all honesty, I'm stressed out, I'm hot, 
I'm tired, my oven's lost all its heat, but it's okay because this food's gonna be good. And it goes to show that sometimes shit doesn't work out. Like my roast potatoes just, they're not my best potatoes, I can't lie. But it's okay, they're gonna taste good. Um, the gravy, so the gravy, we've currently just got the pan boiling on the stove top right now. Tired, I'm hot. If the rest of this video is shit, I'm sorry, I'm knackered. I'm an hour late delivering this to Crudy and myself and we're just tired. Um, my oven's lost all its heat. I've burnt myself near my tattoo, so I'm, I'm over it. But it's okay, because we're gonna eat some good food. And it just, you know, it's okay if things don't always go well, guys. Ow. It's okay. You got this. Um, we're gonna cheat this a little bit. We're just gonna add some beef stock into it. We're gonna add some hot boiling water, mix it all up. And then we're just gonna add this little cornstarch slurry, which is gonna thicken it. Fuck. Sorry about that, you fell in some cauliflower cheese. And that's a fucking roast dinner. That's a very nice roast dinner. Not up to my usual standard, I can't lie, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna give that eight out of 10. If you like this, you can subscribe, you can like it, you don't have to, but you can. Um, yeah, let me know what you might wanna see next week. I post a video every single Monday. Um, yeah, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later.